Hi, and welcome back to part five of the Thin Line Telecaster build. Um, in the last episode, we glued up the top for the guitar. So I'm quite pleased with how this has come out. Um, it's gone together really well. There's a nice tight glue line down the center and the figure joins really nicely along the center. So that looks good. Um, there's also a little bit of, of ripple in this top, a little bit of movement. Next up with this is I'm actually going to cut the F holes into it. I'm not going to go any further than that at the moment. I could do the F holes once it's mounted onto the body. Um, my thoughts on that are there's a lot to go wrong and the sooner I get this done, if it does go wrong, I've not got too much time invested in this and I don't have to take it off the body. Another little job that I need to get done at this stage is to think about how I'm going to get the controls into this guitar. I already know that at least one of the pots won't go through the F hole, which is kind of the traditional way that people have got the controls into these things. I could use a smaller pot, but I don't really want to. I, I like the pots that I've got. They work well for me, um, so I intend to keep them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to borrow something that I know Gibson have done on their 335s, at least some of their 335s. And what they do is, where they route for the pickup, they will actually route a little bit extra, which will allow access into the cavity for the controls. I'm gonna try and do it in such a way that I remove the absolute minimum of material to do that. Um, but I think it should work really, really well. And it's going to make getting the controls into position much easier. Um, the problem with trying to get them through the F-holes, of course, is that you'll be doing it at a point where the guitar will be finished and trying to cram potentiometers and switches, etc., through the F-holes is fraught with all sorts of danger. You risk scratching the finish, etc. So I think this is a, a really good compromise solution, which should make my life easier in the long run and reduce the chance of damage in the guitar. So that's that's the two jobs that I'm going to tackle in this episode. So after an absolute age of figuring out and setting up, um, I've got the F-hole template attached to the top. Now I'm going to route these out, but I'm going to remove as much of the waste as I can before I set the router up, just to remove as much risk as possible of damaging this whilst we're doing the F-holes. Now this template is a little bit oversized um, deliberately because the router bit I'm going to use to route this out is actually steps down from the shank to the cutter and I'm going to run the shank along the template so that means I'm going to actually be cutting around about a mil and a half away from the template. So to give myself the best chance possible of success I'm going to remove as much of this as I can before I get the router onto it. So I'm going to draw around the template now, take it off and remembering to keep well away from that line, I'm going to take as much of the waste out as I possibly can. So before I go too much further with these, um, I'm just going to sketch in a line a little way from the edge. And this is the line I'm going to rough into. I'm just going to work my way around now with the fret saw and remove the bulk of the waste. So I've got a lot of the waste out now um, and I've, I've just extended the cuts with this razor saw as much as I can. I'm going to drill into these areas now and then I think that's pretty much all I can do. We just need to get it onto the router then. 
So you might have been watching me cut those F holes out and you thought, oh, that's a fancy saw. What's that all about? Um, it's a new concept fret saw, a uh, very, very good quality saw. It's made of aircraft grade aluminium. So it's very strong, but very light. Um, and if you listen, you can really tighten the blade up in these. Um, it's just a really, really good tool. It doesn't flex at all in use. You keep that consistent blade tightness, which makes it easy to cut accurately. It wasn't cheap. This is one of their um, cheaper models, in fact, but it was still about 70 pounds. But it is well worth the money. Um, I've had it quite some time now. It's never, never let me down once. Um, so if you do do a lot of kind of dovetailing, that kind of thing, where accuracy is important, I would recommend one of these. And I'm having to be really careful here when I'm routing these F holes. Um, I'm trying to just nibble away as little material as possible. And it's being made really difficult by the fact that this template is so small, I can barely see in there. Okay, so I've run the route around them. Let's see how we've done. Moment of truth. No, oh, that's all right, happy with that. As you can probably see, I've left a lot of the meat in this, in these little bits here, right in those corners. It's all a little bit uneven, um, but all I'll do is I will take some small files to this, clean it all up, and then I'll work these edges in as I do that. But happy, um, managed to get them done without causing any major problems. So that's always a good day. And what I've done it with is a little single flute router bit and I've just run the shank of the cutter against my template. That's not my template but I did run it against the template and then that, that gives me the cut that I need. I also managed to run the cutter through my bench cookie. I've had these years and never done that yet. Never mind. With that done, I just want to take a second to say how pleased I am with the way that this build has been received. Getting a lot of good feedback in the comments. Um, had a few new subscribers. So if you are new, welcome. I always try and answer all of the comments. So if you have got anything to say, if you've got any suggestions, um, please let me know. Um, I'm happy to have that conversation. Right, back to the build. Okay, so I've just started to clean these F holes out a little bit. Um, mainly using a little tool I've made. It's just literally a piece of plywood with some 60 grit sandpaper taped to it. Um, and I'm just using this to smooth out any inconsistencies. Like that. And then I've got a variety of little small diamond files and some slightly bigger files. And I'm just going to work my way around, taking out any of the roughness that's left from the router and also doing the final shaping on these little points here.
Okay, so that's that one rough shaped. It's still got some cleaning up to be done in the finishing stage, but it's more than good enough for what I need now. So we'll turn it over and start on the other one. Okay, so this is going to take a little while, so I'll clean this one up off camera and I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, so that's the F holes cut in the top. Um, as you can see, this isn't a traditional thin line build. Um, ordinarily, a thin line would have one F hole at the top and then a scratch plate at the bottom. Um, clearly, I'm not doing that here. Um, this one's going to be kind of a cross between a thin line, a 335, something like that. So it's going to have F holes top and bottom, no scratch plate. Pretty much all I need to do with the top now is to just cut it to shape. I'm not going to do that just yet because there is a job I have to do before I get this glued on. And as I mentioned earlier, I need to cut an access hole to get the pots in when we're putting this together. And I'm going to do that through the front pickup route. Um, I'm not going to do the pickup route at this point. I'm going to mark it all out where I know it's going to be. And then I'm just going to cut that relief in so I can feed the pot through when we're ready to do that. So I'm going to drop back down on the bench and we'll get this marked out and break out the router again. Okay, so that's that little notch cut out, ready for the rest of the pickup route to be taken away. Um, so the next step is going to be to mark this top up, get it trimmed down, and then we can get it glued to the body. But I'm going to save that till next time. Um, I'm going to call it a day on this one now. So as always, thanks a lot for watching, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Take care. Goodbye.